<laughs> the body's back. This is a huge day. I, uh, I don't think there's words to describe how excited I am with how well Jeremy knocked the bodywork out of the park on this. Now, there's still a few things that I need to do to this rig, and we're gonna go over all the steps that Jeremy took to get this thing looking so good. First of all, spoiler alert, that's not the finished color, that is primer sealer. We're gonna get this body onto the chassis, get it running and driving, get all the work done, and then we'll drive it over to Kevin's shop where Jeremy will come up and paint it, and then that will be when we actually see the final color on the rig. But before I show you all the stuff that Jeremy had to do to this body, there's one thing that I want to do, even though it's completely out of order, I don't care. That body is going on that chassis because I want to see what it looks like. <laughs> I'm not gonna bolt the body down onto the frame. I just had to see what it was gonna look like sitting on the rolly chassis, and I gotta say, it looks absolutely amazing. And this isn't even the finished paint. Right now, we just have basically two different colors of primer sealer, because we plan to paint this thing two different colors. Darker color on the black, lighter color on the white. Now, I'm sure a lot of you wanna know, well, how did this body get to this point? Well, it's all because of a guy by the name of Jeremy Winters. But who is Jeremy Winters? Well, Jeremy Winters, he is an auto body collision expert. He's very knowledgeable in his field. He hosts a podcast called Booth Talk Radio. I first met him when he first came up here to help Kevin Tates with his Jag, and then again with his C10 build on his series, Hands On Cars. And you know, when he saw the Willys wagon body, he wasn't afraid of it or didn't say, oh, that's a pile of work. He looked at it as a challenge and he said, that is gonna be tons of fun. I would love to take on that job and then paint it when it's all said and done. And I was super stoked about that because, you know, number one, that's how I look at a lot of stuff. You know, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of work, but it's a fun challenge. And for him, I knew that he would be able to knock this thing out of the park because I'd seen his work before. But I wanted to make sure that you guys could see how much work it takes to turn a classic 60 some year old truck that's got a bunch of surface rust and some, you know, let's be honest, questionable metal repairs and make it look this damn good. So I asked him to basically keep a running diary, write down all the stuff that he does and then shoot a bunch of stuff with his GoPro and his phone and then just give me all of that. So you and I can take a journey through what it took to get this Willie's wagon body from this to that. First thing he had to do was strip the body basically to bare steel. Now he started with something that's called a cup brush. That's used a lot to prep beds for bed liner. And it just basically cleans out the majority of the grooves and helps deal with any heavy pitting from the surface rust. Then the body was blown out and prepped with a solvent based wipes so you could get ready to do a bunch of welding on the body. Now, if you remember, this section right here, honestly, was possibly in the worst shape of the whole wagon. I basically just cut the whole thing out, replaced it with a piece of sheet metal, and then added these 3 16 inch steel plates that act as a mount for the tube fenders, and then tie into the bottom of the rocker. And it's now incredibly strong because this is 3 16 of an inch thick, but it's mounted over top a piece of eighth inch steel. So this is 5 16 of an inch thick down here at the rocker. And I'm even gonna still add a rock slider to it to protect it when we're on the trail. But both myself, Kevin and Jeremy, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what is going to be the best way to deal with the seam between the thick steel and the thin sheet metal. Jeremy made the call to fully weld every single joint because he was concerned that by simply tacking, it would eventually ring out from constant flexing of the metal. I'm assuming that's a body man term. Uh, he's seen shaved door handles break through the bodywork in the past, and considering this is an off-road rig, 
he was worried that any flex in the body might cause a crack in the future. So he welded every single seam on this truck and that took a pile of time. Then he went through and radiused all the edges of those plates so it matched the factory body lines perfectly. And you can really tell back here in the corner, you can see this is a factory stamped steel body line and when you go across to the 316s plate, it's hard to tell them apart. I can't even remember where the seam is back here on the corner. One thing to note though, he didn't weld these back corners because he was concerned that he wouldn't be able to get the grinder in here to make that radius perfect. So what he actually did was he made the decision to use some SEM panel bonding adhesive on this back corner as well as the other. Now considering it's at the back of the rig, I really don't think this thing's gonna twist at all when it's on the trail. We're certainly confident that we're not gonna have to worry about this joint. Plus, I mean, new cars are glued together with panel bonding adhesive all the time. I am sure it's gonna be just fine. And most importantly, it looks really, really good. Then it was time for actual body work. First step was to hit the entire body with 80 grit on a dual action sander. This was done to remove any surface contamination now body work, he said, can be done over bare steel if it's prepped correctly. And then once this body was prepped, all the areas that were welded got a thin coating of fiberglass, reinforced filler. Some people apparently call this kitty hair or tiger hair. I think it should be called Ian's hair. Then it was time for filler work. Now I always considered this the magic part of body work. Jeremy says it is the fun part. He started with Evercoat Rage Optics Filler. It's a color changing filler, so it goes on pink and then turns green once it's cured, and you know it's time to sand it. The entire wagon was basically wiped from one end to the other, and then he started blocking all of that filler. Now this was tough, because even though the wagon looks flat, it is actually shaped like an egg. So Jeremy used some sanding blocks from a company called Lucky's Blocks. They're a flexible acrylic block that allows him to get a good flat block even though he's bending it to the contour of the body. And this is all done by hand, the entire wagon body. That was a pile of sanding. Then it was time for a coat of epoxy. So he sprayed one coat of Tamco HP 662 epoxy over the entire body as well as the hood and the grill. And then came the polyester primer. Jeremy used Evercoat Optrex Super Build. Like the filler, it goes on pink, but it's got a built-in guide coat. So when he actually sanded on the panel, the low spots would stay pink and the sanded areas would turn gray. Once all that blocking was done, Jeremy coated the entire wagon with two coats of Tamco HP 5310 gray high build primer, and yes, more block sanding, this time with a 320 grit sandpaper. Then he applied two different sealers, black and white, both from Tamco. That way I could bring it back to the shop, still work on it, and not worry about compromising any of his bodywork. The sealers basically do exactly that, seal it. That way it'll be safe until we finish paint this entire thing. Today what I want to do is deal with the inside of this truck. You can see that the inside is still red and that is because I didn't want Jeremy to spend a lot of time finishing out the inside of this truck because there's going to be some interior panels made and then honestly I'm just going to paint the inside of this truck flat black. But before I do that I got to deal with all these seams as well as put some sound deadening and some heat insulation down on this floor and to do that it's honestly just going to be easier to get this body off the frame.
I've let the lizard skin completely dry. I'm really happy with how it looks. One thing to remember though, this isn't like bed liner. This isn't a top coat. If it's in a high traffic area, like the back of this truck, or even the front where your feet are gonna go, you need to put some type of top coat on it, either some type of undercoating or carpet or rubber floor. My plan is to put rubber floor in here when I'm done, just to give it a finished look. And now that that is done and my boom mat is in, I'm gonna deal with the last little bit of red that's inside this truck. Number one, getting the body back from Jeremy, definitely happy to have it here in the shop. And number two, being able to finish out all of the inside now with my lizard skin, as well as my DEI boom mat, and then just basically blacking out anything inside this rig that was red, super happy. Now I'm at the point where I can actually tackle the wiring on this rig, but that's a job for another day because I'm tired, my shirt is ruined, and this whole place smells like paint, but it tastes like whiskey.